What's going on guys? Welcome back to another epic video. And this time I'm gonna do a video standing up because that's my default. Even when I'm on my phone, I gotta pace back and forth. My wife makes fun of me, but it is what it is. So we're gonna give this a try, see how it goes. Uh, today, we're gonna be talking about color theory. And uh, this is gonna be a crash course, but it's not gonna be, you know, me just sitting here reading you fine print and all the beautiful articles that have been written on it because you can Google that stuff. So what I'm gonna do is going to be my typical style where I'm gonna morph this information uh, specifically for filmmakers. And at the end of it, I want you to walk away with something exciting, something fun, okay? And guys, before we jump in and start swimming in this Kool-Aid, let me say it one more time. I will be doing a live webinar next Monday at 11 a.m. Pacific time. You do not wanna miss it. It is ASUS for beginners. I'm gonna be taking you through what is ASUS, how to set up your project in ASUS, how to grade in ASUS, and I guarantee you after this live webinar, you will be ready to grade your first project in ASUS. Plus, by signing up, you will be automatically entered to win my Freelance Colorist Masterclass. I will be picking three winners at the end of the training. So, registration is free, but we have limited seating. So click the link below to join. And if you're enjoying the content, you know what to do. Smash that like button, subscribe to my channel for more awesomeness. Make sure you're following me on Instagram and let's roll the intro. So let's start with the history lesson. You ready? Sir Isaac Newton was the first scientist who came up with what he called a color circle. It was built off of seven main colors on the spectrum, okay? Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. So Roy G. Biv, this is how you would remember it. But modern physics ditched indigo because they said it was challenging to distinguish that particular hue um, adjacent to the other colors that were on the spectrum. So they ditched indigo and then we were left with six main colors. Um, so R, O, Y, Roy, G, B, V. That's the current um, six color spectrum that we see. And you can see it on this chart. It is measured in nanometers. We're looking at a wavelength that starts at 380 to 780. And basically, this is what a human eye can see. Now let's move on to something familiar uh, to most of you, which is the CIE diagram. Uh, you've seen this before, I'm sure. It's also known as the horseshoe, just the shape of this diagram. And what we're looking at is exactly what we saw on the spectrum, all right? So you can now spot these values. If you look to your far right, you see the number 700. And if you look to your bottom left, you see 380, these are nanometers. And this is what a human eye is capable of seeing. And then within that, we have different color gamuts. In this example, we can see sRGB and Adobe RGB. And then this middle point right in the center of that triangle is what's called a D65. And that's basically, in computer's language, a proper white point. This is what computer declares a proper white point, and that's D65. So hopefully all these numbers that you might have probably seen in the past and just didn't really know what it was, it's starting to make sense now. Now let's move on to the fun stuff. So what I want you to do is when you look at this color wheel, I want you to split it in half. I want you to look at the right side as cool tones, left side as warm tones. And this is very important. Whether you're a filmmaker, cinematographer, or a colorist, to identify this because when you're gonna be creating certain moods, just knowing that off the top of your head could be very helpful, okay? And now if we dive deeper into that color wheel, what we get to see is that it's broken into these different categories, okay? Ultimately, there are three main categories. You got hue, chroma, and value. Hue is basically your color. It sits on the top part of the wheel and it rotates in 360 degrees. That's where all your colors are. So violet is a hue, blue is a hue, magenta is a hue. These are all hues and that sits up top. Chroma will be the saturation of that hue. So where is it sitting? How red is that red? How dull is your red? So that's your chroma. Then we talk about the value, which is the brightness of your color. How bright is that red? I mean, that red looks different. Like rose 
red looks different in the morning than it does at night. You get what I'm saying? So now what is it doing? It's not really changing its saturation or its hue. It's changing its values. And knowing these nuances and these little differences is the difference between an amateur and a pro because beginner cinematographers and colorists are just looking for that swing of a hue to get that red, get that yellow, get that blue. They're not thinking about like all these different variations within each hue. And that's again, what separates the pros from the amateur, because the examples that I'm going to be showing you later down the road, I mean, you're looking at uh, Blade Runner right here. We have some other really good ones um, that I'm going to take you through and kind of break down those grades and give you a better understanding of like what the colorist was thinking, what the director's intent was and all that good stuff. And it'll start to make much more sense. So just like I gave you the example of the rose, the bottom line is that the perception of a specific color is based on its interaction with other colors around it. OK, I'm about to show you some examples. I want this part to be a bit more interactive. So I'm just going to ask you guys to pause the video and type in your answer in the comment section below. This is not just a you know cheap tactic to get some engagement going, but it's going to be good for you guys as well. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through a bunch of these diagrams here. I'm going to tell you to type in your answer below and then we're going to revisit and I'm going to give you the answers. OK, so let's check this out. Let's look at this first one and without cheating, going on the Internet and finding the answer. Tell me between these two letters, A and B, which one is brighter? You can type in your answer and just say B is brighter. Now let's look at this other example and tell me which inner square is brighter. OK, left or right. Now let's check out this one and tell me this bar in the middle, which side of that bar is brighter, left or right. Now let's move on to our hue aspect of this exercise. Look at the green in the middle square and tell me, are they the same or different? So like I said, pause it, answer down below. Now, let me take you through and give you the answers. So let's go back to the first diagram. This right here, the A and B have the same exact values. The reason why we thought B was brighter than A is because it's the perception of color based on its interaction with other colors in the space. Same thing goes right here. Let's look at this right here. Obviously, the gray in front of the darker image is much brighter, right? False. They're the exact same values. Once again, having to set which background you're going to pick with a certain color that you're using can change the entire game. And I'm telling you, it's important because as a colorist, now that you're aware of it, you can make conscious decisions to make sure that your image pops and you're doing justice to your footage. Same thing here. This bar is the exact same value from left to right. But obviously, when we look at it, the left side is way brighter, but it's only brighter in relationship to the color behind it. All right. And with no surprise, same boring answer. Both of these lime greens are exactly the same. But when you choose a poppy lemon background, the lime green pops. When you choose a fluorescent green on that lime green, it disappears, it muddies it up and it adds this tinge that just makes the whole thing kind of blah. It's important now because what you can do is if you're in a scenario where the art director didn't really do their job, the DP was just like whatever, didn't care, and you ended up with the image on the right side, what you want to do now is to grab that background. Maybe use hue versus luminance, bring the value down, then go under hue versus hue, swing that hue a little bit so you can create some color separation between your subject, which would be the inner circle uh, compared to your background. So knowing these things will help you understand this and then get the most out of your image. All right. Now let's move on to the fun stuff and uh, let's talk about color harmonies. All right. Um, so we have bunch of different types. I'm going to touch base on the most common ones, especially in our world, in the film world. So the first one I want to talk about is monochromatic. Most of the time people think monochromatic means black and white, you know, done and done. 
That's not true because the clip that you're looking at in front of you is from Moonlight and it's obviously not black and white, but the colorist very carefully chose a monochromatic scheme and you can see it on the vector scope. It lives on the same hue, but just because of different chroma and different value, it created that drama and three dimension in that image, okay? And that is the power of color grading, my friends, because somebody can look at this image and be like, give me perfect skin tones, give me a pure white on his shorts, blah, 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 but then it wouldn't be moonlight. When it comes to creativity, you gotta, you know, suspend your disbelief and just go with where the story is going to take you, all right? Now let's look at another one of my favorite examples and the background of this video right here. This right here, um, is built on our second type of color harmony, which is analogous, all right? Analogous is basically colors adjacent to the color in the middle. In this case, when we look at it, if our main color is orange, if you look at the sky, it has a little bit of yellow. If you look at the ground, it has a little bit of red. And those two colors are sitting adjacent to orange. And that's the analogous uh, color scheme or color harmony, and we can see it again in our vector scope, how it's created. Somebody might think like, oh, to create separation, let's pull the colors apart from each other to do that. But in this case, the color separation was created masterfully just through using analogous color harmony. Let's move on to probably the most popular and most common example when it comes to color grading, which is complementary harmony, color harmony or color scheme. Um, and I just chose a granddaddy clip um, to demonstrate that this is from Joker. And uh, we're looking at Joaquin Phoenix's character. And at this point in his life, his world is falling apart. So when you look at the vector scope, it's not a 50-50 split. It's not like we got tons of saturation in the skin and it's going toward orange. And then we got all this cyan. That's not what's happening. So what's really happening is that we got a little bit of uh, juice in the top left quadrant where the skin tones live, right? Because right now he's lifeless. He's he's mad. His mom is dying. He's in the hospital. So keeping those things in mind, there's not a lot of saturation in his skin. So that's a conscious decision um, from Jill Bogdanovich who graded this film, right? And then in order to create a lot of color and a lot of drama and make this entire thing sing, she used the background color, which is cyan, and pushed it. So that's where the drama came from. Because if right now I go in and I just take this cyan, let me just show you right here, and desaturate it. And if I just pull the chroma back a little bit and make it a little bit darker, bring the value down of this specific hue, all of a sudden, all the drama from the shot is gone. It's not special anymore. So that was a conscious decision to do a 30-70 split where you have a little bit of like warmth in the skin, but then the rest of the shot is driven by the cyan. So it's still a very, very prominent complementary uh, color harmony. All right. So that was a great example of that. And now I want to give you another and our final example here, which is a little bit tricky and it requires a bit more legwork, meaning your production team needs to be on board and it has to be done in pre-production before um, it gets to you in post. I mean, you can technically create it if you have to and if you're asked to um, in post, but majority of this type of work is done uh, in pre-production and then on set. And I'm talking about a split complementary color harmony. That's what you're looking at right here, okay? So it's a Y right? So it's basically, this is what it is. So you got your, you know, main color, which we see this green, he's in a club right now. And this is a perfect uh, color harmony for rom-com and comedies in general. Okay. So this is from Spring Breakers, which is a rom-com. So we got that green on him, which is the unapologetic, our main color. And then instead of like going, you know, directly opposite to that in the magenta direction, the colors split and create that Y. So we hit that red, we hit that purple, right? So we're hitting those two colors and it's creating that Y shape. And it's a very interesting thing because when you look at this image, it's dark, but there's so much pop and juice that you just cannot help but to get excited and 
that's, you know, the beauty of split complementary colors because it just adds this extra, this, this X factor that usually you don't really get to see. Um, call it maybe almost like unnatural. And obviously there's mixed lighting in the club, so you can buy it. Like, you know, it, it's natural in that environment, but it's unnatural when we just think about the sun and the, you know, moonlight and all that. So having a basic understanding of how these colors work with each other and the CIE color system and what's going on over there will give you a significant edge over your competition. Whether you're a filmmaker, cinematographer, director, colorist, whatever have you, right? Like you can utilize these techniques. Honestly, this video, I would keep it in my watch later folder because this is more like a handbook. This is something that you routinely go back to and just, you know, go, oh, what was that one thing that he was talking about? Or let me just go touch base on that. And also I will encourage you guys to keep implementing these techniques that I talked about. If you have a shot that fit one of these color harmonies that I'm talking about, or if you have a tough shot that falls under that green on green that we looked at. And if you just want to challenge yourself and go in there and try to implement some of the things that I talked about and see if you can pull something out of it, I think it's going to be very gratifying. And that's one of the beauties about color grading that I love so much that you don't have to wait. Um, but when it comes to editing or cinematography, you shot something. Now you have to wait for weeks to see the end result. For, with editing, you have to live with that edit for so long until it's like sound design graded and everything for you to see the final image. But us being in the finishing seat, uh, we do something and we get to see the results uh, instantly. And there's something beautiful about it. So guys, once again, we only have a couple of days left to register for my free webinar. If you want to deep dive into the world of color science and especially ASUS is such a behemoth. There's so many different um, school of thoughts and like ways to go about it. The way I'm going to break it down is going to be something where in one hour you're going to walk away um, having enough knowledge to confidently work in ACES on your next professional project. So go sign up. Uh, registration is free, but we do have limited seatings and, and it's filling up. So link is down below. Check it out. If you're enjoying the content, you know what to do. Smash the like button, subscribe to my channel for more awesomeness, and I will see you guys in the next video.